All right, all right. What up, everybody? My name is Andrew Mahone here with ARG's Pokemon channel. I'm going to be playing some PTCGO games tonight. So, yeah, let's let's get to it. Um, I'm going to be be playing some games against Jimmy Pendarvis. Hopefully, he uh, shows up soon. I'm talking to him right now uh, about getting him out here, out here to do some games. So. <clears throat> And I'm going to go ahead and add him real quick. Let's see. Make sure I spell this right. Ooh, that's not right. Oh, here we go. This is how we do it. Jeez. There is no player with that name, Jimmy. Let's see. Hmm. It's saying that there's nobody with the name Kronos Kronos. So that is what Jimmy has told me to add him on. Kronos, Kron oh, not like that, Kronos, Kronos, hello everybody, what's up, what's up, thank you for joining me here, gonna be getting going soon, just wanted to hop on and, and just kinda, kinda see what's up, say hello, get everything added up, maybe talk some decks here for a minute before Jimmy gets on, maybe play a couple fun games, not like, you know, not like every game isn't fun, I mean, Pokemon's always fun. Um, but, uh, you know, some games are more fun than others. So hopefully Jimmy can get on here soon. I was thinking about playing him in a Veltal mirror match. I wanted to request him to do that. Uh, but Jimmy said that he didn't want to embarrass me like that, like he did in the Fort Wayne final. So he's already talking some heat. So hopefully we can get some good games out here. I mean, uh, as much as I'd like to play a rematch of the Fort Wayne Finals, it really, it, it, it was just it was just sending the sheep to the slaughter for that. I mean, I was only playing three Max Elixir in my list. He was playing four, so it just it just wasn't fair. He's re, he sent it, he sent it again. Let's see. Uh, he sent it again. I'm going I'm to go ahead and try this again. Add his username. He says that it is Kron... Kronos, Kronos, S. right? That's what he. That's what he says. This. This is what I'm getting here, right? Kronos, Kronos. Let's see. All right. Oh, there's only one S at the end. Oh, well, Jimmy is mistyping it. Then I'm getting intel that there is only one S at the end. Like that. Now my friend request has been sent, Jimmy. And, and see, I mean, I, I wasn't wrong. Jimmy's been sending it to me the wrong way multiple times. All right, I've added him. So let's go ahead, check out what decks we got coming on tonight. Um, let me check my cameras, make sure everything looking good. What up, everybody? Welcome to ARG's Pokemon channel. Going to be playing some games tonight with pro player Jimmy Pendarvis. Going to be joining us for some action here on PTCGO. Got a couple fun decks made up. Let's go ahead and check those out. Go to my deck manager here. See what we got. Do I want to discard my changes? No. No, keep those. Right, let's save. Save. All right. Let's go ahead and check those out. So we got Greninja. Your typical... Oh, I just did that. Yep, really just did that. Let's go ahead and check that out. So we got our Greninja deck. Uh, I've been working with this, tooling around with it, figuring out how to get these max potions in here without totally killing the consistency of the deck. It's uh, it's not easy. I mean, you want to fit all these, you know, rescue energies in, but then you need regular waters, or not rescue, splash energies, but you need the regular waters in order to power up Talon Flames, Arrow Blitz. Um, but then you also, you want to have your Bursting Balloons, and you want to have max potions so that you can beat, 
Yveltal. It's just, it's just, I feel like this list is kind of all over the place. I haven't had too great of experiences with it yet, but, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. We're, we're, we're messing around with it. We'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, Groudon, that's, that's old. I don't, I don't mess with Groudon like that. Not in standard format. I mean, geez. Uh, Mewtwo Garb, you know, Mewtwo Garb is Mewtwo Garb. We still got the only one copy of Garbodor in there. I don't really love that. This is kind of your typical old school list. Michael Zeely says it needs a salt vest. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. What's what's a salt vest good for in Mega Mewtwo? I mean, he's already got 210 hit points. What, so he doesn't get one shot by Gyarados? I mean, I, I got absolutely decimated by Gyarados, by Andrew Wehmolt's Gyarados a couple days ago. So maybe maybe you're on to something, Zeely. Maybe I need maybe I need a salt vest so that I could take a couple hits. That could, I mean, it could be decent. If Gyarados is a serious thing, I'd rather just play a Spidna, though. Think Spin or Spinda? Or spin, Spidna. Spinda. I'd rather play a Spinna, I think. So, oh, Zeely is saying that not not my not my Mewtwo. He's saying my Greninja needs a salt vest. Got it. So, I could see that in Greninja. You know, just to stop you from getting one shot. I mean, that could it could be better than the Max Potion in some situations. Definitely makes it really beefy. It's going to make it hard for your Veltal to one shot your Greninjas or really do much of anything. Let's go ahead. I mean, we could try it. We could try it. I got nothing to lose. I mean, I don't know. Throw a couple of self vest in there. Two max. Pro Honestly, I mean, I don't know. I like a self. I like the idea of a self vest. That's that's kind of cool. So, um, because you could play it down as soon as you see it. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, wait until the right time. Like max potion, you got to wait until the exact right time in order for it to be effective. We got Mega Guard of War up in here. This is just your. Your pretty standard list. We got Halucha, you know, with his awesome, awesome attack. Sudden or not attack, but ability sudden cyclone. Love that. Love Halucha. Love the art on this thing too. Check that out. Dude is up here on a freaking mountain. Got the sun in the background. Halucha is one of my favorite Pokemon. He is so freaking sick. And we got a couple fairy drop. Probably need a third fairy drop to make this super legit. But I also hate, I hate that this deck is only playing three Skyfield right now. That that kind of irks me to no end. I think we need, you know, we need a fourth Skyfield in here too. But, I mean, I don't know. You can't have it all. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So, we'll see how it goes. Metal Mewtwo, that was, that was you know, kind of a failed project. Raichu Bats, old Raikou, bad. And then we got Scizor, bad, that's right, I said it. Speed Dark, this is kind of a new deck that's getting some hype right now. One of our team members, Bradley Curcio, I think, won an event with it. Uh, plays a fourth Darkrai, usually, but I just got three in here right now. Also, messing around with Pokemon Catcher, I don't know, I figure you're playing a speed deck. Maybe you want to play some Pokemon Catcher. I mean, this this is kind of what I use PTCGO for, just to tool around with things see how they go, see, you know, what works and what doesn't. I like to try Pokemon Catcher in all my aggressive decks just because I think it's a great card. Maybe you can get Pokemon Catcher on an early Shaman EX before you really build up your board and get a ton of energy. You know, that's kind of the thought process there. Also, you know, I think, well, four Darkrai EX and three Veltal EX is like, seems like really overkill. That seems like a, a ton of seems like a ton of Pokemon EX. It's just not entirely sure how necessary that is. But we'll see. Got that Pokemon Center Lady in there. A couple experience shares. I don't love this. I mean, the deck doesn't play Garbodor. I mean, I love Garbodor in this format. I think Garbodor is so good. Also, it doesn't play Parallel City. Those are like my two favorite cards in standard format right now. Excuse me. Those are my two favorite cards in standard format right now. I think, you know, I'm, but then that, you know, I'm biased too. I think you built the Garbodor is really freaking good. You got Garbodor, Garbodor shuts down so many abilities. I mean, you got Setup, it kills Setup, it kills uh, Volcanion Steam Up, it kills Greninja. There's so many things that, that Garbodor helps out with right now. And just being able to Parallel City and Garbodor lock your opponent, just, you could win so many matchups that way. Taking a look at, at this list right now, this is the list I was playing against with Andrew Wambolt. Two days ago, and that was it was fun. I really love Parallel City. I, and I think three copies of Parallel City in this deck is absolutely 
insane just being able to get it down turn one and i also love trainer's mail on this deck so i really have trimmed things up i mean i got no no flare supporters in here i've got no team flare ground we got no delinquent i mean to be honest i just was not finding myself playing those cards nearly as often as i would have liked to considering how much space all those tech supporters take up all those one ofs i really just just want to streamline everything so that so that it just the deck does what it's supposed to do 100 percent of the time hold on i got incoming message from jimmy he wants a frogadier and two repeat ball i guess i can get him that striking deals here with jimmy so he can get everything he needs let's go ahead and set up a trade so i don't know that i've ever done a player to player trade on ptcgo before so let's let's do this let's do a trade offer a my trade offer create trade let's do a private trade and we're gonna do it to chronos 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 all right well Jimmy says that you haven't accepted my friend. You haven't accepted my friend request yet. So we're going to wait for him, see if he accepts my friend request. Once we are able to see him here online, then we'll be able to play best two out of three with him. I also got my friend. Sam, Sam Vernoy, he might be able to play some games with me too. So we'll, we'll see what we'll see what's going on. Let's see. So he says that he sent me visual confirmation of the fact that we are friends. Jimmy has. So we're just gonna wait for this to update because I don't see him. I don't see Chronos Chronos on here. I gotta log out, log out, go back in to refresh. Let's see. I don't want, let's see. I look like I could be from Austin, Texas. Thank you, I guess. Is that a compliment, the grouch? Let's, <laughs> let's see here. Come on, man. Where's Kronos Kronos? Do I have to go into products open, trade completed, show friends, requests? I got some requests here from chams and skybart i don't know who these people are but we're gonna go ahead and give them give them the go ahead oh skybart is online let's see i could send it public let's see i could send trade public i guess all right but i mean what if somebody takes the trade that's not jimmy I want Jimmy to get these things. All right, we're gonna we're gonna give me one second. I'm just gonna log out, log out, log back in, and I put this up so y'all don't see my password or any of that. So give me a second. We'll be right back. I'm still here, audio wise. So still here with you guys I'm gonna go ahead and give it the old college try right I tried using private trade but I Jimmy's accounts not coming up so let's try this again all right guys coming right back here we are hello hello trying to get a trade done with Jimmy Looks like Jimmy might be interested in playing some Greninja games. I'm gonna play uh, best of three series with him, get in some matches, see how that goes. Should be a fun time. Jimmy, obviously, really good player, was able to win Fort Wayne Regionals, and we played against each other in the finals of Fort Wayne. Uh, he absolutely decimated me, but that's okay. You know, it happens. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we're gonna go and try and get some retribution tonight. Jimmy's a good friend of mine. Uh, we we live near each other for a short while when I was living in Baltimore he's a player from the Virginia area pretty sure he lives in Baltimore now though and also an ARG pro Pokemon player so gonna be joining us loading data from the server thank you yes still let's see what the chat has to say 
Private offer, better safe than sorry. Yep, yep. I don't know, man. I'm trying to do trying to do that trade with Jimmy. See what Jimmy has to say. Alright, for some reason, it is not wanting to let me load online. Come on now, PTCGO. Let's get past that 81%. Alright guys, I'll be right back. Got some technical difficulties. Let's do that. All right, guys, what up? I'm back. Uh, still trying to get get logged on to PCCGO here. Jimmy's all set, ready to go. I just got to ship him those cards. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's just still on this loading screen for me, which is in utter pain. But we'll see if we can get past this 8%. I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Right, Zeely's saying, I'm surprised PTCGO isn't working. That's like never happened. Um, yeah, I, I, I had another, you know, uh, the other day I was trying, could not reach the login service. Try again in a minute. Oh, fantastic. That's, that's exactly what you want to see. All righty. Let's see here. All right, this one's going, maybe. 56%, 58, 59. All righty, we're climbing. Maybe we'll get there. 70%, okay, 81. We didn't make it past 81 last time. And we're in, boys. Let's get to it. All righty, hooray. Let's go ahead and trade Jimmy those cards. Was it worth it trying to log? There he is. All right, let's do it. Can we do a trade through this? That would be way too convenient, huh? Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just do the trade through the trade thing. We know how to do that. So trade. Uh, yeah, I'll discard those changes. Fine. My trade offer. Create a trade. Private trade. Kronos. 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 Except he needs a Frogadier. No filters. No filter. Frogadier. And Kronos. Oh, no. He's giving me nothing. I mean, he doesn't need to give me anything. I'm giving him a Frogadier. Frogadier? Let's see. Oh, Jimmy. I only got five of these. All right, you can have my reverse hollow one. Let's see. Okay. Send it, Jimmy. He said he's got the repeat balls. All he needs is the frog. So 
Uh, nothing. Can I just ship it like this? I don't want anything. Is there any way to do it for nothing? There are no items in this year for trade tag. All right. So I think he needs to go in and try tag something for trade. So he needs to go in, tag something for trade, and then we'll be able to ship this over. All right, so. Oh, I have to go into the filters. Can I do it? Let's see. Apply. Oh, okay, I see it. See, for trade. See, but I can't. It's grayed out. I can't do that. I can't unclick it. So. I think he really just needs it to be because I have no filters applied, right? But I mean, there's it's nothing over here. I can't, I can't add anything. So he tagged something for trade. We're going to go ahead and try this again. I can't uncheck the for trade, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and try this again. Private trade. He said he tagged something, so we should be good to go. Thank you for being patient with us, guys. We're just going ahead and getting this. Oh, excellent. I'll take that age of slash. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. Thank you so much. Excellent. Frog. I don't want any filters on that. Give him the hollow frog. Done. I created the offer. Now he needs to accept. He says he needs one more repeat ball. Oh my God. Let's see. He needs to track something else for trade. <laughs> All right, so he's got to tag one more thing for trade, and then we're in. And we should be good to go. Let's see. He's got nothing. Nothing marked for trade right now. So he's going to do that. So he tags something else for trade. We're going to go ahead and do that. Boom. All right. Get another age of slash. Wow. Thanks, Jim. Let's see. And I mean, we're assuming I have a repeat ball. I can't actually guarantee that. No, no, no filters. Repeat ball. I don't know what in the world I got on this account. Yep, we got a fifth repeat ball. All right, cool. Send that his way. All right, so we should be just about good to go. Uh, I'm going to go to short, short, short break here just for about five seconds, and then we're going to go ahead and get Jimmy Prindarvis on for some games. So... Jimmy should be good to go. Let's look at my decks. All right. All right, guys. I'll be right back when I get back. Uh, we're going to be doing some awesome games with Jimmy Pendarvis. Make sure he has a second to get his decks together. Uh, leave in the comments what you guys would like to see me play. Uh, my standard decks. I'd like to play Volta Garbador. We got that Speed Dark deck too. Volcanion, Vespa Queen, Scizor, Mega Gardevoir, Mewtwo Garb, Greninja. Leave in the comments what you want to see me play. And uh, I'll be right back. All right.
All right, everybody, what up? Welcome to ARG's Pokemon uh, channel. We're going to be playing some games on PTCGO tonight with Jimmy Pendarvis. Uh, just took a quick break. I'm coming back here, seeing what kind of decks you guys wanted to play with me. Oh, uh, hold on. Oh, Jimmy's gone ahead, gone ahead and, and challenged me already. Give me a second, Jimmy. I got to start the recording and do this all over again. All right, signing on. Going to sign on one more time so we can put this on YouTube later. Just pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> Here we go. All right, what up, everybody? My name is Andrew Mahone here with ARG Pokemon YouTube channel. Uh, also, oh man, dude, I messed up the sign on again. We'll try it one more time. The. All right, what up, everybody? My name is Andrew Mahone. I'm here with ARG. It's Pokemon Channel. We're going to be playing some games on PTCGO tonight with Jimmy Pendarvis. Super excited. Should be some good games. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Checking out the Twitch comments right now. I got people, uh, let's see, got some people harassing me. Got some people telling me to play Veltal. Got some people playing me, uh, telling us to play Speed Dark. Jimmy is on the chat. I don't know exactly how fair that is. Jimmy Pendarvis is on my Twitch. Uh, he's on the Twitch channel watching me play so he can see all my hands while he plays me. That seems kind of busted if you ask me, but uh, it's fine. We'll be fine. So let's go ahead and pick a deck to play him. Let's see. People are saying Speed Dark. Let's go ahead and give Speed Dark a roll then. People want to see how that deck works. Let's go ahead and challenge Jimmy and get rolling guys gonna play a best two out of three with him uh, this deck is just now getting some hype I'm not sold on it I don't think that I don't think that the deck is, is all that all that hot uh, especially against Greninja I mean I'm expecting this to kind of just be a decimation I mean if he gets Greninja set up and going I mean there's pretty much nothing I can do but that being said, if I can roll, if I can, you know, run him off the board early, then, you know, maybe I got a chance. And that's kind of what the strategy is going to be, especially with this Speed Dark deck. Speed Dark deck, it's just playing aggro, Darkrai, EX. We're playing Darkrai, EX. We're playing Yveltal. We're playing Reverse Valley to do additional damage. I see Jimmy, you see, he's got the Silent Labs. He's got the, he's got the, uh, the max potions in there and goodness we started our hoopa no supporter and an ultra ball i couldn't have made a worse hand for this this is insane all right probably going to be a quick one here guys let's see how the flip goes maybe he goes first and ends me i don't know it's possible he's got the trainer's mail in there and oh there's the end See, don't finesse me on the chat, Jimmy. Don't finesse me on the chat. I know you're watching. Play this hand like you would play it. Two ends. It's a sign. It's a sign. Go ahead and let it rip. Here we go. Thank goodness. Brand new hand. Get that one the heck out of there. That is an unplayable piece of garbage. All right. This hand looking a little better. All right. This is what we like to see. We got some dark rise. We got an energy. We got a trainer's mail, a sycamore. Jimmy, he did not start Talonflame. That's fine with me. Let's go ahead and get rolling. The idea here, oh, nice. And we got a Max Elixir. We want to just start ripping prizes as fast as possible. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and play the Trainer's Mail first. We want to thin the deck out, make sure that we can, you know, get extra cards out of here that are not going to be energy so that we have the highest chance possible of hitting energy. We're going to take that Reverse Valley, just get that going. The idea is if I get going fast enough, then I won't need to use my abilities later in the game. I know that he plays, uh, we want the dark side facing me. My dark attacks do 10 more damage. Good, good, good. Now we're going to max elixir. Hope we get it. We did. Let's see what else we got there. Yveltal, some ultra balls. Done, done, done. We'll put that onto our dark rye. Then put another darkness onto our dark rye and sycamore. Hopefully we can rip a switch card here we did not that's fine that's fine so let's see what we got i could bench 
the Darkrai and the Uveltal EX, and then I could set up for a handful of cards. Um, I could also Ultra Ball some cards away to make that setup even better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plan on doing that. I really want to get the turn one attack here because, I mean, this is pretty much an all-in matchup. I don't have any room for messing around. So I'm going to Ultra Ball away. Yveltal seems not nearly as good in this matchup. Um, so I could Ultra Ball away a Yveltal um, and maybe the Darkness Energy. Or I could set up for all six. Yep. I think I want to do that. I'm going to Ultra Wall away the Verse Seeker and the Darkness Energy. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fail that. And then I'm just going to max out and go to try and hit my Switch cards. Uh, do I play any Float Stone in here? Looks like no. So we're really stretching here trying to get those two Switch. Oh, we do play the Escape Rope too. All right, we're going to fail that. Play the Trainer's Mail. All right, we whiffed. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and just dive in here. Set up for six and see how that goes. Hopefully that, that buffs out for us. All right. We were able to get an escape rope, so that's cool. We're going to put the experience share there. Uh, I got someone telling me that this is not a typical speed dark list. Uh, you know, maybe it isn't. That's fine. I don't think I played three Pokemon Center, lady. Uh, I don't know who saw that. But uh, this is a dark list inspired by the one that Brad Curcio did really well with recently. Uh, it, it's pretty close. I, a lot of the card choices came from him. I mean, I wasn't just making this stuff up. So it's coming from somewhere. All right. So we got a turn one attack here. Knockout on a Froakie. I don't mind. I did have to burn my Versus Seeker there. You know, so I don't exactly have a supporter for next turn, but you see that we do have Lysander and Pokemon Catcher. So we are at least set up here in his position where we can kind of just poke around Jimmy's active for a while. So if he ends me, that's fine. Let's do it. Fantastic. Thank you, Jimmy. That's perfect. So he's going to refresh my hand to five, giving me, uh, giving me some more options here. Nice. I was able to get a switch and a Hex Maniac. I won't be needing that Hex Maniac for a little while, but it's still... And if he doesn't get a basic here, I win. There we go. All right, guys. Speed Dark going up to 1-0. We're able to just Dark Pulse is active, knock it out, and we take the W. And that's exactly... That was the, the only win condition I have there is to just run him off the board. So we were able to make that happen uh, with a matchup that I thought would be pretty bad, actually. Uh, just because if, if they get set up, I mean, that's so horrible. I, I really only have Hex Maniac. That's not a lot. But as you can see, that deck just gets going very quickly. Got a turn. Uh, you know, was able to get that 100 damage going uh, very early on. So that was awesome. I think that was a turn 100 damage. It was, so very impressive from the Speed Dark deck. Uh, really, really happy with that. Uh, first of all, I need to find it. I, can I pick my format? Jeez, I just have to go through and just find the Speed Dark deck here. Give me a moment. Jimmy is gonna be opting to going first here, I'm assuming, so I'm gonna let him go first whenever we get that. Here we are, Speed Dark, except. Gonna let him go first here, give him another shot against speed dark so maybe speed dark isn't all hype maybe there's something to it i won the coin flip but i am gonna let him go first because he lost the last game got a handful of nothing so let's shuffle that back in but so does he now if jimmy goes first and he's able to stick a turn one silent lab and i don't start a supporter in my hand this is gonna be really good for him uh, i'm not really looking forward to that you know, that's definitely one way he's able to get a leg up on me in this matchup. I'm assuming he plays a high count of Silent Lab. I've been seeing him all over the place in his mulligans. Nothing again. So that that would be really strong. But I am starting a lot of... Well, here we go. Wow. We got a lot of nothing. So if I'm going to start with somebody, you're going to want to start with Darkrai, uh, Evil Ball. Well... Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go in with dark right here. Yeah, 
all my other mulligan hands had like sycamore in them or ultra ball or something so right now we're in we're in top deck mode do i really have three pokemon center lady in this list that would be insane i'll, I'll check things out when i get home but or not when i get home when i when i get out of the series i'll check things out but we'll keep the series honest i i did not see you know i might have misclicked it that's a that's a possibility that i misclicked but I doubt I was able to fit three Pokemon Center Lady and two Pokemon Catcher in here. Because I'm pretty sure I used that for all my open spots. But, you know, I'll check it out. That's just what the chat is saying. So, we'll see. All right, we got a mail. Praying on the mail, guys. So, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have started with the Yvetal EX just so I could escape rope out my Darkrai. But, that's fine. Uh, I'm not really bothered about it. Let's uh, let's just train this mail, see what we get. So we got a max elixir. Yep, and here we are, you know. So that's fine. We're going to grab the max elixir. That's all we got. Uh, it's not a lot. Would rather it be a supporter. So what we're going to have to do here is we are going to have to go in with Yvetal EX because we would like to knock out that Froki, which we can do here. We're just going to have to do it with Yvetal EX. So let's see if we hit that. I got three dark in my hand, though. Oh, we still ripped it. That's fine. We're going to go on to Yvetal EX, attach here, escape rope out his Froki, and take the turn one knockout with Evil Ball. Still getting it in there, getting it done, even though, you know, I think I would have rather been on Dark Eye, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me. We've got another Darkness Energy. Wow. I mean, we just, lucky we hit that, uh, that escape rope, even though, even though, or not the escape rope, we were lucky we hit that Max Elixir. Even though you know I had prized to dark and had three in my hand, the odds of odds of doing that are pretty slim. He's gonna need another bench Pokemon. He's Ace Trainer. I mean, I'm actually fine with that because my hand is total, totally dud. So, um, well, and sure enough, he he gets me another dud hand. So he's gonna water duplicates. He's gonna get a bench full of Frogadiers. Got that little Yvetal. That's not exactly who we're looking for. And we're just going to go ahead and save the, you know, we're going we're gonna to save the, the Hexamaniac for when that actually matters. There's no point in playing that yet. Uh, going to wait another turn. I don't want to hit into his Frogadier, but I don't really see another choice. It's just kind of what we have to do. So we got a 2, 4, 6, 8. We're going to take a knockout. I don't love to do this, but, you know, what, what else am I going to do? So... We're just going to bench that guy, and then let's go ahead and uh, let's attach to our Darkrai and just Evil Ball for knockout. You know, I'm, I'm drawing so dead that I kind of just have to mill through the cards here. Uh, it's supposed to be a speed deck, but getting a really, really poor start. Just opened a dud hand. Not much you could do about that. Uh, that's kind of the same thing that Jimmy ha happened to Jimmy in our last game of the series, so... Uh, it's looking like this will probably go to a one-to-one, -one, and then we're going to have to go to game three. Game three, I'll be going first, though, which is awesome. Uh, helps out a lot. If I could get set up on him real quick out of the gates, then I'm going to be able to pretty much just run run over him, hopefully, uh, before he could get totally set up. Let's go here. Yeah, chat chat agreeing with me looking like, yeah, I had to had to hit the Frogadier. I mean, there's no way I just passed there. You know, I'm on the back foot here already. And if we're thinking about it in a regional setting, like this is best two out of three, really, you know, I would have probably already scooped this game up and gone to game three uh, a while ago, to be honest. He's going to Ace Trainer me again. I don't really see a way out here with him just like setting up like this. Well, hey, there's one of my Pokemon Center lady. <laughs> it's kind of useful. Let's check it out. And we got a trainer's mail and a Sycamore. So let's see what the trainer's mail does. We get a Pokemon catcher. That's actually kind of useful. Maybe we'll take the Pokemon catcher. Let's show the play mat, see what we got. I could catch her up the Froki and knock it out. That might help. I know he plays Max Potion, so I really don't want to just hit into this dude for not a knockout. So let's just take the Pokemon Catcher and let's see how that buffs out.
Tails. We whip that. That's fine. I could Pokemon Center Lady here. Uh, let's see. But I have, I have what, 30 hit points left. If I heal 60, then he will not be able to knock me out with the Moonlight Slash. However, um, he is taking advantage of the fact that I'm not setting up at all. So I don't, I don't think the trade-off there is worth it. I think I just need to go and just try to get, try to get set up. Like Zach, this Yvettel, like dude, this Yvettel, it's been nice, but we're gonna move along here. He's about to get a Greninja break into play. I mean, he's gonna snipe that Yvettel. It's just gonna be bad news. So. We're going to probably leave it in the active. I don't really want to. I don't want to promote the Darkrai because if he snipe knocks out this Uvetal EX, then I'll promote the Uvetal, the little Uvetal, and just let him hit into that, and then maybe switch into my Darkrai. Um, I will. I'm just. I'm debating here whether or not to Ultra Ball. I don't really want to burn any of these things. I can Max Elixir though. Um, with that i had two darks in hand a little bit of a risky play but that's fine so we'll just go ahead and we pretty much got an evil ball here i gotta save the switch uh, i gotta save the lysander because next turn you know maybe i switch maybe i lysander something out to get around a bursting balloon uh, i mean it, it's just pretty much gonna go to gonna go to pound town here i don't really see any way out with him getting set up like this so we're pretty much just gonna let him let him do what he does. Yep, like I thought, he's got the max potion. He's playing Ultra Ball here. Interesting, uh, Greninja List started playing Ultra Ball, which I think is a good inclusion. Uh, not only increases your odds of being able to get Greninjas into play, also helps you get every other card into play. So typically in that spot, people used to play See. Okay, he is going to just go ahead and snipe my bench dark right typically in that spot People would have played like level ball or something like that But ultra ball just more versatile card and also having the secondary use of being able to uh, Be played to thin out the talent flame from your deck obviously helps out a lot Let's see ends me to or ace trainers me to three uh, Not exactly a sweet draw there. So we'll, we'll see and then he'll go ahead and just moonlight slash or or no he he could just he could just uh, shadow stitch for knockout so I'm assuming he'll shadow stitch. He's got the bursting balloon. Oh yeah, this is pure decimation. But fortunately, like I said, we're gonna go to game three. I'm gonna be going first. Ooh, man, 120 damage on that bench dark ride. That hurts. Uh, and this is what's coming in. I said before, you know, seems like a bad matchup. And this is exactly why it seems like a bad matchup because it just is man. Look how bad this is just getting ace trainered over and over again um, You know now that he's got Greninja's out. I was never really able to establish a real board position And now he's just gonna go ahead and just turn through these no problem I'm gonna attach those there and we'll dark pulse for nothing knock myself out. I mean what else am I going to do? I'm just trying to get this game over with as soon as possible, to be honest. Trying to go to game three. But I'll let Jimmy revel in it a little bit. Let him enjoy his W. Actually go ahead and get it. Let him flex out a little bit. Show what this Greninja, Greninja deck can do. And how quickly it can eat up these last two Pokemon. And then we'll move on to game three. I'll be going first in game three. And hopefully we could just run them off the board again. That's kind of kind of just how this matchup is going to go. Uh, I'm not totally sold on this deck. Uh, the Speed Dark deck. I just think Garbodor is just way too good not to play. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's cool being able to hit, you know, hit some quick attacks and things like that. And you have some nice tricks in here. But... You know, I, I don't think really any of it's any of it's as good as as Garbodor. Garbodor's way better. Just the plays you're able to make up with N and Garbodor, or Parallel City, just way too good. And as you see, Jimmy's totally stunting over there. He's got three Greninja Break, totally insane. Just uh, you know, this is your ideal setup. There's, you know, no deck, no deck is gonna take this down. 
at this point in time. Someone's telling me that Greninja is its worst matchup, but I consider Greninja to be one of the best decks in format, so I just don't know how could you hype a deck, you know, how could a deck be hyped if it's, uh, you know, if it takes a loss to one of the best decks. I don't know. I mean, whoa, here we go. We got ourselves a, a hot Verse Seeker. Let's go ahead and play that thing. <laughs> uh, it's a little too little too late at this point, though. What are we really going to do? Oh, yeah. We got ourselves a Shaman. A switch. That's it, man. Jimmy's got this one. So, we're going to go to game three with Jimmy Pendarvis in our best of three series. I was able to take game one. Really just... Really just wipe him off the board there. He didn't get a basic and just benched him. And then game two, as you can see, I struggled to get set up while he just totally oh, while he just totally swept me. Now game three, I'm going to be going first. And we'll see how things go. Hopefully I get a playable hand. Nice. I won the coin flip to boot. Love that little Chansey coin. I think that's that's probably my favorite one there all the coins on PTCGO. All right, we got ourselves a playable hand. I'll take it. I do wish this deck played Parallel City. Um, maybe I'm just biased, but I, like I've been saying, I think that's just like the best, the best stadium in standard format right now. And it just feels so silly having to put these shamans down and then not being able to remove them. Also, Parallel City, just really good. Really good against Greninja as well being able to go ahead all right so we were able to rip the sycamore there um i'm kind of cool with just diving in with that sycamore play and really just going aggressive here so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ultra ball away um hmm because if I go and I do commit to Sycamore, I mean, I don't think there's anything in this deck. If I get a secondary attacker, there's nothing in this deck that I could be too worried about uh, too worried about discarding other than Darkness Energies. So, you know, but then I don't want to play two Shaman down either. So we'll do a Shaman and a Lysander. I think that's fair. And we're just going to get Hoopa. And we're going to go ahead and get all of our attackers. We're just going to go get Darkrai, Yveldal. So I got Hoopa, Shaman, Darkrai, Yveldal. Yveldal, right? Let's see. Show play match. Just make sure I don't mess this up. One, two, three, four, five. All right. I can get all three with Hoopa. So let's go ahead and just do that. And here you're seeing this would have been nice. Maybe we play the, the fourth Darkrai. Then maybe we don't whiff the... Uh, Maybe we don't whiff, you know, the, the other Darkrai there and we're able to set up more Darkrai, but oh well. So I will attach to the active Darkrai and then we're just going to go ahead and try to max, elixirs, max elixirs to the bench. Uh, I do like this Let's better, go. saving the end. If I save the end now, if I don't set up into things that I see, and now I'm glad that I kept the end because I don't necessarily want to discard another Dark. So glad that worked out that way. I don't need any of these cards. We're just kind of burning here because we want to set up fast. So I just want to see as many cards as I can on the first turn in the game. We don't need anything off of that, though. And we're just going to end. We're going to end here instead of Sycamore just to keep those darks in the deck. Oh, man. Check that hand out. You know, trying to be a little conservative here with our resources, but that's fine. We're going to save the stadium as well. Just go ahead and pass it up to him. See what Jimmy's got for us. I'm assuming he doesn't run Talonflame here since he hasn't started it in any of our games. Which is interesting. Talonflame is just so good uh, in this format. Maybe the account didn't have Talonflames. I don't know. But not all not all Greninja. Lit. Oh, he misclicked. Jimmy, you can't misclick, man. This is serious game. It's fine. I mean, what? You end? I mean, I'm sure it's not the end of the world. Maybe you meant to play a repeat ball or, or something else. But, I mean, he's got two Frokies, so that's not a 
That's not a game-breaking misclick. I am going to play my Darkness Energy, though. And you're going to see me here. I'm, I'm not going to Sycamore. And it's for a couple reasons. I want to take that energy out of play. Let's see, two, four, six, seven. I'm not going to play my Stadium Ed either because I want to just, you know, I want to have the highest chance of being able to keep my Stadium in play. So the reason why we're going to just Lysander here, I want to take the energy out. Also, I want to just preserve these energies for one more manual energy attachment. Just make sure I'm not messing this up. Two, four, six, seven. I haven't played this deck, so just making sure I am actually Dark Pulsing for 70 damage. Now, the only downfall to that play, the little more conservative play, is now is he, if he would have attached a Bursting Balloon, which he's doing right there, we see, I wasn't going to have, a, you know, a, a good chance of getting a Lysander for next turn. Well, he's going to go ahead and end me, so we're fine. But as you can see, I ripped the Verse Seeker off my prizes, so we were all squared away to Lysander again and just attach energy, and I was going to be okay with that. But our list does play two Pokemon Catcher, as you can see here, coming in clutch. So... This is part of what I love about Pokemon Catcher is that we just have this option now that even though, oh nice, any prize to Frogadier, so if things are looking okay, we're going to go ahead, put the experience share on the Yveltal. The reason I'm doing that is because I want Darkrai EX to be my main attacker. So I want, you know, the Yveltals, they can stockpile all the energy, and then the Darkrai EX, he's going to be the main attacker, kind of get it up there and doing the dirty work. So... I'm gonna put the darkness energy on there, and then we're gonna we're gonna go in this turn. So we're gonna put the darkness side towards us. Go for the Pokemon catcher. Try and get around. Thank goodness we're gonna Frogadier. And right there, Pokemon catcher really just shown its worth in you know a speed aggro deck like this. Yep, Jimmy's Jimmy's saying gross. He thinks it's gross. I think it's awesome. Pokemon Catcher is an amazing card. Look at that hand, though. Jeez, three Professor Sycamore and two N. Just a whole handful of supporters. I do have one playable tool. We might as well play it because if he ends me, I don't want to just draw that again. So I've attached my energy for turn. Still haven't seen a Max Elixir yet, but we're going to take the knockout on this Frogadier, and we're perfectly okay doing that. So... As you can see, we're doing everything we're supposed to do in this matchup, uh, except for playing Max Luxers. We're definitely supposed to be doing way more of that. you know. But next turn, all I have to do is I have to hit 130 damage. I'm going to hit 130 damage, no problem, because he, you know, I did 100 last turn. I'm going to add 20 to that with another Dark Attachment, and I got that Fury Belt. So I'm going to hit 130. Things are going to get difficult once he gets this 170 damage, uh, 170 hit point break in action so I need to start getting some max elixirs and ramping up dark rise damage additionally he's got the bursting balloon again he's got a moonlight slash coming this turn so my dark rise is finally starting to take take some hits he's starting to see some heat here he's probably gonna end me thinking that I have this huge awesome hand I don't it's a handful of crap so I don't terribly mind getting in there that's fine and there's my max lecture. So we're okay with this. I got no real reason to play the switch right now, but I do want to play these max elixirs, get those out. Let's see. And as you can see, since we're getting end, all this is happening. My only real hope you see that Pokemon catcher there? My only real hope of dodging this Fury Belt, not the Fury Belt, dodging the uh, Bursting Balloon, my only real hope of dodging this is to, we missed that one, is to hit that Pokemon catcher. I doubt I can do it. Uh, I'm wondering if it's correct here to to switch into this Darkrai. Yeah, I think that it might be just to kind of spread our damage out more so that he's not able to take that energy off the board as quickly. It's going to be more difficult here. He's going to have to snipe this bench one with, with his uh, breaks. So we do hit another darkness, and we get a Hex Maniac. That's big. We can use that for next turn if he, you know, I mean, so long as he doesn't end again. I mean, who knows? Maybe he does. So we'll do that onto the Avelto with the experience share, and then we're just going to go ahead and Dark Pulse knockout we're gonna take the heat with that 
60 damage. I mean, there's pretty much nothing we could do. We get a Trainer's Mail back into the deck. That's really good. So just in case he does end me, getting that Trainer's Mail off the prize gives me another additional out to hit it hit an out to draw or hit an out to something off of end so i don't mind that at all as you can see this matchup i mean when when both sides are drawing okay and both sides are doing what they need to do this matchup can be very close i mean i've taken three prizes to his none so far uh, i have hit into one bursting balloon unfortunately but was able to dodge another with pokemon catcher that was awesome most speed dark decks are not playing pokemon catcher but i don't see why not uh, and you're pretty much doing that aggro thing so you know, why not Why not go for those quick shamans? Why not Sycamore and take out a shaman in the same turn? I mean, you got all this space. All you're doing is playing EX Pokemon and, and good cards. And Pokemon Catcher is an amazing card. So I don't really get that logic too much. Uh, why not? Uh, but let's see. We got Switch and Hex. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately... He is going to be able to, uh, he's got that bursting balloon, and he could just max potion my damage off. So you, th you see, things are starting to go downhill here pretty quickly. Uh, if I can't, you know, since I can't take the one-hit knockout on this this turn, I've already played two max licks, or I would need another really big turn. You see, he's able to put this dark right all the way up to 200. I got an experience share. But Experience Share is only is when it's knocked out by an attack. And so Bursting Balloon won't activate Experience Share. Um, I can switch into my other Darkrai and then Hex Maniac. But things are just looking really rough. We'll put the other Experience Share onto Yveltal. And we got to switch. I can't just knock him out and not have that, and not have that energy go somewhere useful. So... We'll switch into this dark eye and then we've pretty much got a hex and then just and go for it there's no point in trying to stall out these bursting balloons so this way uh even if he does do the 80 damage required to knock out uh to knock out this dark eye at least i do get my experience shares so then i can continue to evil ball but as you can see he is quickly encroaching on four prizes which he's going to be able to get here very quickly. Now, if he has a max potion for this Greninja, I'm pretty much going to call that game over. I don't think there's a lot that I can do. Uh, with that Sycamore play, I mean, it's looking pretty good for him that he's going to be able to get that. I don't imagine that he whiffs. I mean, let's see how many max potions he's got in the discard. None. I mean, if he whiffed a max potion there, uh, you would be feeling pretty good about that. However, it doesn't even matter. He's going to be able to bring up that bench Greninja and attack with this one. So, you know, I'm not going to have access to his damage Greninja anyway. He's pretty much got all day to got all day to, to heal that thing. So he takes the Moonlight Slash, doing the 80 damage. He's going to take that knockout. And let's see. So what do I do here? I'd like to put that one there. And I'd like to put that one there. Alrighty. Cool. So now I can, you know, I can evil ball or I could do dark, what? Dark pulse for two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 130 damage. Not nearly enough. I don't know. And he doesn't have bursting balloon attached. If I promote this dark ride, he'll probably just snipe it. And then I'll have to promote something else. So let's uh yeah that does do more damage though so let's just go ahead and promote him let's make him snipe it you know or he'll snipe something else okay we got a trainer's mail and we got a pokemon catcher in sycamore all right we're gonna go for the sycamore here uh pretty much no reason not to bench that evil ex and let's go in okay i did not get uh, unbelievable really uh, a couple decent cards I could have gone for there I mean the Pokemon catcher would have been great um, but I missed everything oh my god just a handful of nothing unreal okay so uh, I should just clear these ultra balls and end out of my deck I don't want those let's see max elixirs unbelievable look at all this six dark energy and just nothing my hand is just full of full of garbage 
So, there's all these good cards in here. None of them are in my hand. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and just Dark Pulse. And, uh, yep, things are going to get ugly here pretty fast, but we'll see what we can do. Maybe he prized all his Max Elixirs. That's, you know, not Max Elixir. Maybe he prized all his Max Potions. That's got to be our hope. Uh, he's got a huge hand over there, so I can't imagine that he doesn't have a max potion. Oh my gosh. Okay, no, that's not an attack. This is a shrieking. Yep, he's pretty much going to get game here. If he could just double shriek in that shaman and then knock out my dark eye. All right, hindsight. So, you know, should have promoted the Yvetal EX last turn so that he couldn't pull that play off, but it's fine. And then he's just going to go ahead and just uh, attack the Dark Rite EX for game. It's fine. There was pretty much pretty much nothing I was going to be able to do there anyway. But uh, I did miss that, that play there on the Shaman for game that he's got. So that's the series of Jimmy. He was able to take out... Oh, he still wants me to... Still wants me to play these, though. <laughs> so Jimmy was able to take out... Six prizes all in two turns there in the end of the game after he was able to get that set up. Uh, I was anticipating that that matchup wouldn't be too great. And it does look like that just with Ace Trainer being able to limit my options. And then, you know, things just don't go well. I mean, with an EX heavy deck, that's that's Greninja's wheelhouse. Greninja is just able to prey on, you know, the fact that I don't have any ability lock or anything like that. So I'm going to message Jimmy real quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put up uh, put up a short commercial break, but uh, I'll be back shortly to get another series, probably with Jimmy Pendarvis in, uh, see if he could do another one with me. So uh, leave, it, leave comments. Let me know what you guys want to see me play. Uh, I'm kind of interested. Oh, he's challenging me again. Jeez. Let me see real quick and see what he, what he wants to play. All right. Well, scratch that, guys. We're going to hop right on in with another game. Jimmy looks like he's ready to go. So I'm going to play something different here. We're going to go in with my favorite deck in standard format. And that's going to be Yveltal Garb again. So let's see. Oh, or we could do Volcanion. Uh, who wants to see Volcanion? We could do Volcanion. Let's try Yveltal Garb. Looks like we're going in Yveltal Garb versus Greninja. See how much of a difference that Garbodor makes in this matchup. It should be it should should be all the difference. But I haven't played this matchup yet with the max potions that Jimmy's playing in his list. So this is this is very different. Um, and I've been told that you know things get things get much worse for Yveltal Garb, which I believe it. I mean max potion pretty much horrible for me. It's already hard enough to, to one hit knock out these Greninjas and then when they're, you know, or knock them out at all without taking serious damage. And then when they are, you know, when they're able to, to negate an entire turn with a max potion, that's pretty much a worst case scenario. So uh, Garbodor lock is important though. We'll kind of see how that, how that is able to help us out. I do have a Pokemon Center Lady in this list, so that should be able to help us out as well. Though, as you saw in our last series, Pokemon Center Lady never came into play. Now, you guys will see here, I did pretty much start my worst starter in the deck. And this is why, one of the reasons why people are trimming down on their on their uh, Fright Night Yveltal counts. Just starting it is so bad in some situations. Uh, and you guys will see that here. The reason it's so bad is because I have to get, not only do I have to get Garbodor into play, I have to get... I have to also get uh, a float stone on my Garbodor, and then I also have to get a float stone on my Fright Night Yveltal. I'm not playing Olympia. There's no other way to switch. Fortunately, Jimmy has given me a gift here with about a half dozen mulligans, which is insane. He just can, keeps mulliganing, which is awesome. So I'm just going to take all those free cards, and it's going to help me help me get rolling here again. Wow, I can't believe that. This should be a better matchup. Uh, I'm he's gonna deck me. Is <laughs> Jimmy thinks he could deck me? Because uh, you know I'm gonna take all these mulligans. Unbelievable! Uh, I think the most times I've ever mulliganed in a game, I'm all in top eight of Ohio State's uh, last year. I was able to 
I, I mulligan, well, not able to. I mulliganed seven times versus Kevin Baxter in top eight. It was horrible. Uh, and I was playing Night March of all decks, which shouldn't be mulliganing that much. Before we get started here, I uh, just want to shout out real quick to the ARG Circuit Series, which is coming up. Speaking of state championships, it just reminded me, uh, ARG is going to be hosting their own state championships this year. Pokemon's not going to be hosting those officially. So you can head over to ARGCircuitSeries.com. Those are happening the weekend of February 3rd to 4th. Um, so those are happening in card shops all over the place. You can go to ARGCircuitSeries.com and see. Oh my gosh, I didn't get an N. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But that's fine. He's probably going to end me. I imagine that he doesn't want to see me starting with this gigantic hand over here. However, I am not, you know, I'm a little intimidated because I don't want to sycamore all this stuff. So it's kind of a interesting situation. I was hoping that maybe I would have drawn into an N with a, with a hand that big. And I wanted to get set up, but maybe I was, uh, maybe I was too greedy. Let's see how things play out. Hoping that he... Oh my gosh, but if he's silent... Okay. So he's silent labs, which is an interesting play, actually, because it allows me to get this Fright Night Uveltal out of the active without uh, without needing the Garbodor into play. So I don't... Uh, I think he's just hoping that maybe he could stick me there uh, and that it wouldn't be a problem. But if I play my cards right, I should be able to get myself out of the active, get my Trubbish out, this is this is interesting. So I don't want to really throw this is this is really a confounding hand. I'm not exactly sure what the correct way to do this is. So let's let's start about by ultra balling. Let's ultra ball away a Pokemon Center Lady in the event that he does end me next turn and we're gonna ultra ball away the Lysander. Because those are some cards that we want to get out of the way. So we are going to need the Trubbish, but we don't need the Trubbish quite yet. Each of these turns that I play, I'm going to need to get, uh, I'm going to need to want to do an energy attachment. Now, I don't want to just sick more away three darkness energy. That's bad. So I want to start attaching them somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the Uvetal EX. I could have gotten the Trubbish just to get a turn two Garbodor online, but that doesn't really matter if I don't have an attacker built up. So I'm going to do this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him down. I'm going to attach a darkness. Then I'm going to attach Floatstone to my active Fright Knight. And because he's used that, I'm able to retreat into my Evodal EX. He used that Silent Lab. So that's a super nice play. It's pretty convenient that I'm able to make. I'm not... I could Sycamore right now, but I'm going to wait one more turn to see if he does end. Uh, just because that, that would be good for me. But I don't really... I could counter his Stadium. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'd like to try to win the Stadium War, but... With I do have three copies of Parallel City, so it is possible. I'll go ahead and do this and just limit his bench to three. That way, if he does try to water duplicates, he won't be able to water duplicates all the way unless he also gets the counter stadium. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. Then uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and pass just so I can get it one more attachment in before I sycamore this huge hand away. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and do that. And now if he doesn't have, and he doesn't have it. So the stadium came in clutch there. He is not able to water duplicates for the full effect, which is awesome. He also attached that bursting balloon. So I do have all these verse seekers here. I ultra balled a, a Lysander away. So I could just go ahead and I can Lysander around this. Now with the cards that I have in hand currently, I cannot knock out one of his bench Frogadiers, which is unfortunate, but I can target down that Froki. So I might decide to do that. We'll see what the trainer's mail gives me though. Oh, this is excellent. Okay. Now I could grab the ultra ball or I could grab the N. Um, and I'm tempted to just go, oh geez. Yeah. I kind of have to go with the N. I can't really, aff but he hasn't played a supporter yet. So I'm not entirely sure that he even has one. Because, I mean, typically Greninja will sit and they, and they will kind of just play their cards down. But he didn't, I feel like he would have gone for a, a, a stadium to, to try and water duplicates for more. So I think I'll take the Ultra Ball here 
and just go for go for the trubbish. I think I could do that. Um, but then again, I'm and then I'm playing the rest of the game with only a couple Lysander, and I don't love that. So I will we'll see how it buffs out. But I am going to do this. Um, we're going to Ultra Ball away. The Sycamore and the Enhanced Hammer. And we're going to grab our Trubbish, get him into play. All right, and then we're going to Lysander around him. I'm going to Lysander up that Froakie. Avoid the damage. And Evil Ball. So next turn... Next turn, we're going in. Uh, we're going in with the Sycamore, and that's okay. You see that I've been, just from being conservative, I've been able to whittle this huge hand down into something, you know, pretty reasonable. And you can see what his the rest of his hand was there. He ultra balled it away. He is working with kind of a dead hand. He's able to get his Greninja out. Uh, I got the chat saying the end seems really bad if he's only two with no supporter. Right, but I didn't know if he was sitting on the Sycamore. He could have been sitting on the Sycamore because Greninja does tend to do that sometimes. They just will water duplicates without playing the supporter because they don't want to draw into any Frogadier. But, oh, and I top deck N anyway. Interestingly, though, I still don't want to play it. I know he's dead drawing, so I'm probably just content to i mean if he gets if he top decks out of this this is really bad but what i could do is i could i could just pokemon center lady and just be even more patient and i'm kind of okay with that so i think i'm going to do that just assuming that he's just going to continue to dead draw i mean if he if he burns me here then he burns me here but we're going to go for it and then next turn, we'll Sycamore and get totally set up. So let's just Evil Ball. We're going to keep the energy for now. And I'm okay with that. So let's see what he gets. I know one of those two cards is a Water Energy. All right, the other one was a Silent Lab. So uh, as you can see, my conservative play has paid off again. I'm able to do, I still have this Stadium in my hand. And I'm going to be able to counter his Silent Lab. And then this turn, finally, you see that I've whittled that gigantic, pretty much unplayable hand down all the way to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick him. Let's see. Yeah, we're fine with this. I'm going to stick him with a side that nerfs damage. Let's see. Does it make a difference? If we, he has, our Evudel has 100 damage on it. So uh, if I'm able to get a Fury Belt on that guy, then he has 210 hit points, and then if he's doing only 60 damage a turn, then he's going to be able to do 120, but he won't knock me out if I whiff the worry with the Fury Belt, and that's a big deal. Or I could keep him from setting up more Greninjas, which I like too, but I'll limit him with the damage side. Uh, I think that, that that's, that's a good play here, so in case that I do whiff, uh, I will be able to uh, I'll be able to, to withstand another Moonlight Slash. So let's go in with Sycamore. And we were able to get the Garbodor, but not, uh, not the Floatstone. So we need that Floatstone. It's important that we started digging here because he will eventually get a break into play. I mean, I'm sure he's going to top deck into something eventually. And when he does, I need to actually have, you know, my Garbodor out. I can't just just depend on him to just not draw anything forever while I just like top deck. So we're going to go ahead and Y Cyclone. Yes, I know that. Don't show that again. So we'll Y Cyclone, we can put that energy onto the Yveltal EX. Take our knockout. Got another Sycamore. That's fine. And see if Jimmy can draw out of this dead draw that he has found himself in. He did. He was able to find the end. So you can see I'm happy that I that I Sycamore there. Got the Garbodor. It's less pieces that I need. And as you can see, even though I got end into a pretty booty hand here, I got the Floatstone. And that's the only piece here that really matters. I can buy some time with everything else. And as you can see, if he doesn't counter that stadium, he still whiffs the knockout here. 
which is exactly what I had planned. So really awesome turn of events there. Okay, great, great. We got the floatstone for the Garbodor. That's exactly what we wanted. And then I'm just going to go ahead. We evil ball for two, for 60. You know, we're going to go ahead and Y cyclone. That's all we got, but we got to do it. But Jimmy is going to be able to set up now. So I'm going to need a supporter. I'm going to need to draw out of this. I've really turned through a ridiculous number of verse seekers there in the early game. Uh, I was able to kind of use them decently well. But as you can see, I only got three outs to Sycamore left in my deck. I do have two trainers mail left though. So it is possible that I could get them. But now Jimmy is in this game where he, you know, he is, he's behind. Uh, but he's about to take an EX knockout. So, uh, if Jimmy can establish a born position here and just, and just have me top deck and not be able to attach for a while and just max potion these energies off, he's going to be able to make like mount a serious comeback. I'm in a decent spot though, because I can promote this, this Yveltal over here with the float stone and not have to pay too heavily for that. Yeah, so things are looking bad. Not that bad. All right, we got our we got ourselves an end. That's good. He's still stuck doing less damage. That's also good. And since he just took an EX, I'm going to be able to end him down. I'm actually okay with this card being the end, the supporter that I got. I'm going to bench the other Evital EX just to get an attacker on board, my third attacker. And then, excellent. Okay, these are pretty much the cards we wanted to see here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Fury Belt here. Then I'm going to just pass to burn that uh, that that bursting balloon. I am not going to attack into that at all. Now I do want to eventually build up one hit knockouts, which is going to be really tough to do. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. I'm doing fifteen right now. So if I hit a max elixir next turn, I can actually get away with it. But right now, totally content just leaving this guy out here. I want to force an odd prize game so I can buy some time uh, while I just sit back here and get things going with this Bench Devetal EX. So let's hope this pays off. If Jimmy is able to rip a Lysander or something like that, that's not what I want to see. I don't want to see a Lysander to put some damage on this Yveltal EX first. I also don't want to see a Lysander on my energy list Yveltal. He's able to get the other Bursting Balloon, but Jimmy knows that I'm not about to go ahead and swing into that Greninja with the Bursting Balloon. He only plays four of those, so that's his third one. I should be able to work through it, you know, and then if he doesn't find a counter stadium, he's stuck doing less damage again, so he won't be able to two-shot this Yveltal. He'll only be three-shotting it, which is really good for me, because then that Yveltal is putting in maximum amount of work. He's going to go for a Sycamore play. That's fine. So right now he's trying to get his board set up and this is pretty much what he wants to do. He needs to get his board set up. He needs to get more Greninja break into play. I need to get myself another freaking supporter. <sighs> he doesn't find the counter stadium, which is good, but he still has one more turn to find it. All right. So we're not going to go swinging in there. We are just going to attach this one more time and we're gonna hope that he does not have we're gonna hope that he does not have the the Lysander. I can't go diving in with this Yvotal EX. Let's see what he's got. Michael Zeely's asking what's the play for Athens? And all right, so got some people in the chat here asking me, what's the play for Athens? Apparently, I'm going now. I like Yveltal Garbodor still. I think it's an amazing deck. You know, you're pretty much, uh, I mean, I, I think if you play it well, you're going to at least have a chance in all the games that you have. Now, you could play uh, Ikra Ninja, you could play Gyarados, um, you could play uh, Guard of War, but. As you can see here, I think I got the one-hit knockout. Uh, but I think Yveltal is just the most consistent. Volcanion's also fine. Uh, the format's wide open right now. There's a bunch of things that you can play. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's count this up real quick. Two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 17. We got everything that we need. That little Yvetel was able to hang on like a champion. And check that out. I'm not going to misclick. Last time you guys saw me misclick one of these. That was horrible. 170 damage with a clean Yveltal EX. This is pretty much a dream come true. This is exactly what we want to see in the Greninja matchup. Uh, I still have an odd prize here that I can force on him. He's not going to double Lysander, my Garbodor. And this, this Yveltal EX just has to, has to soldier through uh, a few more Greninjas. Even if he puts a, uh, his last Bursting Balloon on this Greninja, I'm probably... Oh, he Ace Trainers me. I should have put that Fury Belt down on the Yvetal EX, but that's that's fine. All right, so we got some playable guards. Most importantly, we got this Lysander. If he is able to put the last Bursting Balloon down, which he isn't, he doesn't even find a counter stadium, which is great for me. That's great news. We got a Max Elixir. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play that, just thin the deck out. Pretty much all we want from here on out is we just want Lysanders, healing cards, supporters. We just want to make this Yveltal last as long as he can. We have one more VS Seeker left in deck. I probably want to save that for a Lysander in case I need it. Ultra Ball. I'll take the Ultra Ball just to thin it out of my deck, but I don't need it. And then we're going to save this Lysander because we just want to knock out the active. So this game, pretty much just going to town right now. This is everything we needed to do. We did it. And this Yvotal EX is going to be able to take us home. Uh, unless something really bad happens. I mean, because he can't, unless he doesn't play Rare Candy, he's not going to be able to get that Bench Froakie into, into a Greninja. I don't even think he plays Jirachi. I mean, Jirachi is the one way he could kind of slow me down. But I don't even think he plays Jirachi. So, yep, he scoops it up. We got game one. Uh, we were able to get there, so that that was awesome. Jimmy did dead draw for a little bit there, you know, so wasn't a total fire game for him uh, that he would have won wanted. But uh, I've heard that that you know that that matchup's not good for Yveldo now that it plays Max Potion. So, you know, uh, pretty pretty satisfied with that win. I'm cool with that. Uh, let's see, Jimmy challenged me again. Got another question from the chat. Just starting this game, played Magic Forever, ripped a Yveldo from a pack. Is this deck a place to start? People kept recommending Volcanium, but it doesn't appear to be as much fun. Uh, to Vegeta, uh, there on the Twitch chat, I would recommend starting with Yveltal. I mean, this is going to teach you all the basics you need to play the game. Uh, it's a very, it, it's kind of a skill-oriented deck, but it, it's going to teach you, it's going to teach you, you know, the kind of decision-making skills that you need uh, in order to get started. But Volcanium, also an awesome deck uh, if you're just getting started out. Is the kind of, you know, it's nice because you actually get to play an ability in that deck as opposed to Yveldo where you just stop abilities. So Volcanion will give you the feel for what it's like to really just go all in and set up a deck with a bunch of EXs and and just uh, and use the ability, use Steam Up and really just uh, take some some really cool one hit knockouts. So uh, why not why not both? You know, I think if you're if you're going to start anywhere, you might as well start with those two decks, Yveldo and Volcanion. I think, you know, they're kind of your bread and butter of this format. Uh, but without getting into any mega decks, so I think they're both they're both perfectly good to get started with. Uh, Eric Kansman asking if I can lend him Gyarados this weekend. I'm actually not going to be in Athens this weekend, uh, which is which is kind of sad. So unfortunately, won't be there. But good luck to all the ARG players, all my Poker Beach uh, teammates also who are out there. Um, gonna be gonna be playing in in Georgia. Good luck to those guys. Hope they all do it well. Hope ARG is able to take it home. Uh, again, that'd be awesome. I know uh, a bunch of our players will be there this weekend. Jimmy's going to be there. Igor's going to be there. Uh, should be a good time. So uh, I'm going to see Run the Jewels this weekend. And you guys heard, ever heard of Run the Jewels? They're awesome rap group. Super excited uh, to see them and in concert. So this hand, let's look at this hand. This hand is horrible i mean this is pretty much not what you want to see i can't put the fury belts onto my Yveltal because i need to use the float stone remember that situation we got ourselves into last time i need to use float stone to get him out of the active i don't play Olympia in this list so can't do that um i can ultra ball with a lysander i got a verse eager to get it back i don't want to commit an energy to this Yveltal, and i need to go get a shaman because i'm drawing total crap so 
let's get rid of the enhanced hammer and the f I can't I really cannot attach a fury belt to this dude like I cannot I will never get him out of the active I'll be just stuck doing 60 damage that'd be horrible um but what am I gonna do set up for two like that's so silly all right let's go in let's get rid of those let's get the shaman all right we got a 2-2 two -two garb line in here we got everything we need it's okay we won game one we can afford to lose game two this is fine i think i can't set up for two that's horrible so i think i need to lysander and attack and commit an energy to him but that just seems so bad um let's 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 do it let's i can't can i put the fury belt oh god i'm gonna be through two fury belts it's fine let's let's lysander too i'm gonna lysander one of these up and let's actually set up we'll give ourselves a chance this game all right we did it we're all in uh just rip it off like a band-aid that's horrible and this is pretty much the last thing you want to see in this matchup is a uh is a uvelto with a fury belt on in the active the only positive thing is that it could do 170 it has 170 hit points if i get that all squared away i know i got another garbador in the deck so that's fine i can go ahead and discard it so that's okay I'm just going to be getting off to such a slow start. I discard the Sycamore and the Garbodor. I'm going to get a Trubbish, I think. No, let's get a Evotal. We'll get that Garbodor out eventually. We're going to get a Evotal EX. That's who we need. And then, I mean, I, I might like to get a, a, a Max Elixir, so I could play that Trainer's Meal, but I don't really care because he might end me next turn, and obviously I'm not going anywhere fast, so... He can just go ahead and take the turn. Let's look at the comments. See what we got going on on stream here. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Yep, no problem, Vegeta. You know, good luck getting started. Uh, let's see. Just ask him for no reason. What is a good counter versus Volcanion and Yveltal? Uh Versus Volcanion and Yveltal, that's tough. I mean, if you're going to play a deck that beats both of those... Um, I mean, Guard of War can hang with both of them. That's why Guard of War is pretty popular right now. You know, Guard of, Guard of War can hang with Volcanion, though I think Guard of War has a slightly favorable Volcanion matchup. If you talk to some Volcanion players, they'll tell you that Volcanion has a slightly favorable matchup. It's just kind of like, you know, I mean, it just depends on who you talk to. And then if you talk to some Yveltal players, they'll tell you that they could be Guard of War with Yveltal. And if you talk to Guard of War players, they'll tell you that they whoop up on Yveltal with Gar Guard of War. So, um, Gardevoir is probably the answer to your question there. What can beat both those decks? It's probably Gardevoir. All right, he did not end, so let's go ahead and see. We got two trainers meals here. We're gonna go ahead and blow those. We got a max elixir. That's what we need. That's good. So we'll do that. And then, is there anything important I'm looking for off this trainers meal? It's kind of an interesting situation. I think I just want to play the trainers meal first. Uh, just to get another card out of the deck. What we're going to do is we could take Parallel City and limit him. Show my playmat. I can't limit him. I mean, he's only got... That's such a weird play. He's got Active Froki and two Bench Frogadiers, and he didn't Water Duplicates. Gosh, that's weird. Uh, okay, so I mean, the Parallel City doesn't really come into play here. I'd like to wait on that, and I think he's also waiting on his stadiums, if I had to guess two, so that he has a higher chance of winning the stadium more than he did last time. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the enhanced hammer and the second more that away because uh, I just want to draw into good cards from here on out. And a max elixir, we're gonna hit that. I mean, you know, some people might be critical, say like, "Well, Andrew, you know, you could, you could enhance hammer away his uh, his splash energy, but that's not gonna be the grain breaking play here. I need to get set up. I mean, I'm on such a back foot, having to start with this this Yvettel in the active that. We just got to get going here. We can't really afford to just screw around. Um, weird situation. I want to get I want to get a Trubbish out. Starting to get to that point in the game where we need to see Trubbish. However, um, all I got is this Trainer's Mail. So do I wait to play next turn? Do I play this turn? Do I play the Max Lux or this turn? It's all crap that we got to think about. So let's see. Um, there are some things we need. So let's play the Trainer's Mail right now. We need, we'll take the supporter. It's better than no supporter. So we'll take the supporter. And then we could max elixir. I've already attached for turn. I'm not getting him out of the active, confirmed. Let's just go ahead and bench this guy. And then 
we got to go ahead and pass it off to him as, as much as I hate to do that. Uh, we could do the max luxor. Let's just do that. Yeah, we whiffed it. All right, it's fine. And the float stone I want to save to get on the Trubbish, so we'll pass. Let's see. What's the cheapest deck to put together on PTCGO at the moment? Um, Yveltal, probably. It's just super cheap. I mean, these Yveltals are promos. This is this Fright Night Yveltal is the most expensive card you got in the deck. I mean, the Shamans, obviously. The two copies of Shaman are the most expensive card you got in the deck. But, um, you know, pretty much every deck is going to need two Shamans. Well, Greninja. Greninja is another cheap ish deck you could build just because it doesn't play shamans so if you have absolutely no access to shamans uh go ahead and, and build greninja but greninja breaks are expensive so either way you're going to be looking at at needing to invest somewhere and i in my opinion if you're going to invest somewhere i'd rather see you invest into shamans than invest into greninja breaks because greninja break gives you one deck that you're going to be able to build whereas uh, if you buy, if you go ahead and just, and just commit to your, to your two shamans that opens up. Now you could play like a bunch of decks, like you're pretty close to building Volcanion too. All you need is to get a Hoopa and you're on a roll. So let's see what we got here. I'm probably, I'm going to ultra ball away. He is not doing anything over. He's got the two Greninjas, but he's still, all right, we need to get, we need to get Trubbish out. This is, this is that critical turn. So here, here he comes. Uh, he's going to be able to do 60 damage to one of my Trubbish though, which is actually really bad. So, because if he, we're going to assume that he's able to get the ability off this turn. We're not going to end him. He's only got a hand of four. Things are looking super scrappy here. Let's get the floatstone down. We're going to limit his damage output because we want to keep my bench open. Uh, oh no, no, that does, oh, I messed up. Okay, that's fine. Um, no, I should have limited him so that I keep my, it's fine. We just misclicked there. Uh, we needed to limit him to three so that I keep, keep my bench open. So I get one more trubbish down, but it's not necessarily, I mean, it's kind of a judgment call. Like it's, it's six, one half dozen, another, we just hope, hope that he doesn't get a snipe down on this, this turn. Uh, we are able to go up and take a knockout, um, with this Yveltal this turn, but we do that by manually retreating or we attach a DCE to this Yveltal. That's kind of hilarious. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. I don't love that play, but, you know, it's better than burning two energy. So let's just take this while we got it. And then I can't... I can't get my second Trubbish out. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to leave the bench spot so I can get the second Trubbish out. So I'd have an option of where to go uh, with my Garbodor, but that's fine. He's probably going to get the snipe here, and we'll just have to lock it up. I did discard one Garbodor already, so he's going to have the option to Lysander my Garbodor this game. Let's see. Take a quick look at the chat. Um, most of my losses lately with Greninja have been Gardevoir. Are you coming to the League Cup on Monday? Um, I am planning on going to the League Cup on Monday. I was supposed to register for that today. So uh, good luck. I'm going to gonna have to go ahead and pre-reg for that. It's like a $35 League Cup, um, and I'm being forced to buy an RK9 box in order to do it. So uh, that's kind of interesting and kind of not cool and kind of not what I want to see. Just like this Ace Trainer here that he's probably about to slap me with. Uh, but like I said, it's cool, guys. We can afford to lose this one. Uh, we, we won game one, so that's totally fine. No problems here. Go ahead, shuffle it up. Ace Trainer, let's see what we get. See if we still get that Garbodor out. All he needs is an energy, and he's going to be cruising on this Trubbish. But if he doesn't get the ener if he doesn't get the Water Shriek in, oh, he gets the Water Shriek in. Yeah, he's going to go in on that Trubbish for 60. All right, let me know. The registration goes up at 8. Thank you. So I haven't missed that yet. Thank you, Zeely. Appreciate it. All right, so this is pretty much bad. Uh, that's fine as far as this game goes, but let's see. Let's see what we get here. I'm I'm not like in the worst situation ever like not the worst situation I've ever seen I've definitely seen worse 
we can slap this here. We could get that Garbodor out, but then all he needs is a Lysander, and he's back in the ability game. I could just smack into this uh, Greninja with my Pitch Black Spear again. I'm kind of okay with that. It actually doesn't make me the most mad. I could Lysander this Froakie. I actually really like that play, but then I don't like the idea of him sniping my, my Garbodor. I'm probably odds are that I'm not getting my my other Trubbish out and then getting a Garbodor out like in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm just gonna commit my DCE there. We're gonna go for the big one hit knockouts here at the end of the game. That's pretty much our only shot of winning this one. Okay, so we do have the Garbodor. If you were to snipe this one, but that's just more turns of him having abilities, which I don't want. I don't want him to have these abilities. Uh, he is gonna be able to take an even prize game though. If he knocks out this Yveltal, and then knocks out my Garbodor on the bench. So whatever, we just gotta go in. We we have to, I don't see any other option. We gotta go in with that Garbodor. We gotta go in with the big Evil EX and we just gotta hope that we could just wail through every Pokemon in his field. Um, so I'm not gonna hit into that. I'm gonna hit into that with this Evil. That's fine. 60 damage, whatever. 70 damage because th that thing works. He has 170 hit points right now. He's got to hit me uh, with the big Moonlight Slash. His Moonlight Slash is only doing, you know, 60 damage. He's still able to get that knockout. He's got another Bursting Balloon. That's okay. I have Burst Seekers in hand. Unless he Ace Trainers me again, then I'm going to be able to Lysander around for, for big damage. I was, I if you guys remember, I had to burn two. Oh, he ends me. Uh, but he actually... You know, the prize game is actually very close right now, which is weird, you know. He's only going to take one prize. I have five as well. I just got off to such a slow start. I told you guys, starting this guy and having that weird freaking hand, having to put having to put that Fury Belt on him was horrible. All right. So now... Now this is not good because we want, he's got a huge hand. You gotta assume he's probably got a Lysander up there. And then I, uh, I am just gonna have to go wailing in here with this, with this Yvettel and that's not what I wanna do. But let's see, two, two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 12, 14, 16. Oh my God, and I'm short of the one hit knockout. I can't even get it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I need that Fighting Fury Belt. But if you guys were watching that opening turn there, I had to burn two Fighting Fury Belts in that opening hand. So I only got one left in deck. I uh, can't even get the one hit knockout. That's horrible. So I don't actually know what we do here. I think, I mean, I go in and I hit him for 160 damage and take that, that huge hit. That seems horrible. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and try to force a let's try to force a, an even bigger prize game. Okay, there I kind of miss I misclicked. I should have definitely gone for the uh I should have definitely gone for the dark energy to discard instead of that float stone cuz now I'm at his whim. But let's uh let's get this trubbish and we're going to force another odd prize. So what we're going to do is we're going to force him and then we're also going to make him burn a turn. So that's what we're going to do. That's our play. We're sticking to it. Um, we couldn't afford to hit into him and hit for only 160. That was horrible. So if he has a Lysander, he's going to have to check, uh, choose between this Yvettel EX and this Garbodor. Unfortunately, I already burned my other Garbodor, so I can't get it out. But his board is actually not that strong, as you guys can see. If I was able to take a one-hit knockout there, if I had that Fury Belt, I think I could have won this game just by running him totally off the board. He's got the Silent Lab. That doesn't really matter at this point. Other than the fact that he's doing a little bit more damage. I mean, but the, you know, the, the effect of it doesn't really matter. Is he able to get another Greninja Breakout? And he's going for a Sycamore. I wonder if he plays Lysander. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm hoping that he does. If he does play one Lysander, then, you know, it's it's perfectly reasonable that he hasn't seen it yet. Uh, he is going for the Max Potion there. That hurts. I uh, definitely wanted to see that stick, but uh, the game plan is definitely going to be uh, go in, 
go in with this giant Yvetl and just try to one shot everything on his on his board. So that's the Hail Mary play. We're sticking to it. This is how this is how we get this matchup done. And then we just hope that Okay, see so he gave himself another turn. Alright. But I do get do I have one more float stone left in deck? I do have one more float stone. Do I risk it? Oh my gosh, but how many Verse Seeker do I have left? Because I have plenty of Verse Seeker left because I'm very close to decking myself. I haven't been uh, I haven't been good. I haven't checked my prizes. I mean, that's definitely what you want to do in this situation. No, one. I'm not miscounting, right? I got one float stone there, and I got one float stone there. So you're seeing this predicament that I got myself into by not discarding by discarding that float stone instead of the energy. But I didn't really I didn't really see myself getting into it like this. That's okay. I could attach the DCE here. Then we got two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, that actually might be enough. He's got an energy on board. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Then I would need the Fury Belt or a Max Elixir. And I got one Max Elixir left in deck. How many dark do I have left in deck? One, two, three, four, five, six, 79. So I have a few darks left in deck too, but I may, may, might draw into them. Uh, I don't want to burn this DC like that though. I think I just want to hit the float stone. And just do it that way. But I don't know if I prized it. Anybody on the chat know if I prized it? You know if I prized it? Well, let's go. Let's just go in. Guns blazing. Let's see. Or the Fury Belt. Those are the two things. I either get the Fury Belt or I either get the Flood Stone. And then I'm going to have two cards left in deck. But I have plenty of Versus Seekers left that I can end and do stuff like that. That I need to do to kind of finesse my way out of decking. So let's uh, let's go. Let's get it. Let's have some fun. Oh, we got the float stone. Yes. God, we're so good. Okay. So here we're going to go. Retreat. God, that that is the play. There we go. Getting it. All right. So we're in the clear, guys. See, I'm going to... And the reason I didn't play that Max Elixir or anything is because I am so close to decking at this point. As you can see, I only got two cards left in deck. Uh, that I'm going to need to end all those cards back into my deck. So we've executed the strategy pretty much perfectly up until this point. Uh, we do have, unfortunately, this Yuvatl EX on the bench, which is just a, you know, kind of a liability, but that's fine. We're, our board position is superior. If he's able to Lysander this turn, the Garbodor, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to take his last Greninja break off the board. So he's going to get it. It was really essential that I got I got that play last turn, knocking out that Greninja break. So, see, and that's what he goes for. He does go for the stall play. Jimmy, you're listening to me. You're listening to me. I know you're watching me on stream. See, you're cheating. Uh, that's fine, though. We can do this. Let's see what our energy count is. And potentially, all right. Potentially, he's going for the duck out. Uh, which might be his win condition right now. I actually don't know what my energy situation is like in deck. And as you can see, I only got one darkness in my hand. So he might be wagering here that I don't have a darkness left in my deck. Four, five. Let's, uh, you know, I got plenty of cards though, Jimmy. We can wait this out. Uh, should I check with the max elixir? I could check with the max elixir and see. Um, I don't want to do that. Jeez. Oh, let's see. One, two, six, seven. So either I prize too dark or there's one left in deck. Uh, I don't want to check with the max elixir. So let's just go ahead, attach here and then pass. You know, I mean, like we either, you know, we either have a dark left in deck or we don't. You know, I'm kind of, I'm bummed that we have this Yvotl EX here. That he was able to Lysander up. Jimmy's a really good player, so he's able to take advantage of a little nuance like that. But I think I had to put it down. I had to have the option. And then things just got tight with my float stones. I think I just, 
you know, but I wanted to be conservative with my energy. So you can see how these conflicts happen, right? So that turn where I ultra balled away the, fl uh, the float stone in the stadium. I wanted to be conservative with my energies because now here I am in a situation where, you know, the, the very last energy is making a difference. So let's see it. Moment of truth. Is it an energy? It's not. Um, geez. So I can end myself to four, but we're not going to be able to draw into this one. We prized two darkness energies, so we're not going to be able to do what we need to do. He's going to be able to deck me. Oh, no. And this is not the way you want to lose a long, drawn-out, hard-fought game. Oh, no. I got myself into that. So there it is. This is what we need. And this is just what we get for playing Pokemon Center Lady instead of instead of Olympia, you know, if we'd played Olympia, we'd be out of this situation. It'd be no problem. But Jimmy, he's a smart player. He knows better than to go ahead and knock out this Uvetal X, which is what I need him to do. And he's just not going to do that. He's just going to buffle me till I deck out. So I'm going to spare you guys the agony of watching that. We're going to scoop and we're going to go to game three. Just bad beats, man. Bad beats. All right. So, uh, for those of you guys just tuning in, what happened there is that Jimmy was able to deck me out because I, uh, you know, I, I ran out of energy. So he Lysander'd up. He saw his only win condition. He knew I had a huge Yvodal EX. Uh, and his only win condition was to get up that Yvodal EX and pray that I didn't have the second energy. I just prized one too many. So I had one too many darkness energy in the prizes and wasn't able to get that thing up out of the active in order to sweep with my one last big Yvodal EX. All right. So this is going to be game three. Going to game three here. Let's see if we can take down Jimmy's Greninja deck with the Veltogarb. I'm feeling good about this matchup right now. I think it's, I still think it's in my favor. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. So, I mean, look how horrible that start was for me. I mean, Jimmy's start was bad too. I mean, he didn't even water duplicates. I don't know what he was doing over there. But that was a horrible start for me, having to burn so many resources and was still able to kind of finagle my way into a decent situation. So I'm going first this game. We have a decent shot at being able to pull this one out. Let's just start a playable hand, like a nice playable hand. And let's hope we don't start that Fright Night Yvetal again. I just don't want to go in with him. That was horrible. Well, here he is, rearing his head. And we got the two the two Fury Belts, because who needs those, right? So, geez, Louise. All right. See, I'm almost afraid to take mulligans for Jimmy. No, now that I just got this uh, this sycamore here, I feel like I'm just going to totally draw into things that I don't want to see. Oh, N, fantastic. All right. All right, so that's fine. I don't want to put the Fury Belt out there. We're just going to go ahead and we're just... Ah, clearly. Oh, my gosh. Jimmy's talking to me saying that Yvelta wants to be loved. I hate this thing. It is horrible. What a horrible starter. Uh, let's go ahead and get things going, though. I'm not going to put that Fury Belt on him. I'm going to save those for my Yvelta EXs. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and start with an end. So I don't want to play the Stadium down because I want to win the Stadium War. Oh, my gosh. And look at this hand. I can't believe it. This is how this matchup's going to go down, huh? It's going to go down like this with me and this... Freaking Fright Night. Just like really tearing it up. Okay, he ends me again. Thank goodness. All right, so at least we have a, a hope this game. Oh my gosh, or do we? This, I cannot, I cannot comprehend how ugly these hands are. These hands are, are just absolutely atrocious. Okay, we got a Sycamore there, but gosh, that's not even, that's like insult to injury. Like, here are my two Fury Belts. Things are ugly. I don't even know if I have a Garbodor in deck. I mean, that could be my only one, in which case that's horrible. But, uh, so I don't want to discard the Garbodor just because I don't know what's left in deck. I do kind of want to just go ahead and go for a DCE. So let's go, let's go here. Let's see what's in the deck. And then if the Garbodor is not in deck, I think we got to wait. All right, Garbodor is in deck. 
So we can go with Yveltal EX. So we're going to grab a Yveltal EX. I think I want to go for DCE. How many DCE do I have in deck? Four. Yeah, I think I want to go for DCEs just so I don't, I'm not like wasting my energy here. Uh, I'm not going to put the Fury Belt there. I'm going to put the Fury Belt on this bench, Yveltal EX. We're going to limit him. If he doesn't get a counter to this, then he is going to be limited on his options with uh, water duplicates, which I know he has to think is annoying. Okay, so we got a couple Max Elixir here, but as you can see, we're already, I mean, we only got five Max Elixir left in the deck, so these are not super likely to hit. However, I could save them. It's a weird situation. I could save them. I could save them till, uh, I could save them till next, you know, till I, if I end next turn or something like that. I do want to get Trubbish into play. I did not hit DCE, so that's fine. I'm going to get a manual attachment here. We're just going to go in with that on our manual attachment. And then I have a weird decision here. I could, I want to get the Trubbish out. So I think I'm going to actually ditch a Max Elixir, as weird as that is, just to, because I want to save the actual hard energies. I can't just go ahead getting rid of those. So I think I'm going to Ultra Ball, Sycamore, and Max Elixir. Those of you guys watching might think that's a weird play, but that's actually, that's kind of what we got to do. At a certain point, especially versus Greninja, where I don't have to go like early aggro, like I can afford to kind of just slowly ramp up my damage. Um, it's actually correct to, you know, to value your hard copies of energy over, over the max elixir. And then we got to just kind of throw it over to Jimmy. Uh, we could play this Max Elixir, but if I end next turn, then I have one more Dark left in deck. So I think we'll just, I think we'll just go with it like that, and not worry too much. All right, Jimmy's got the Frogadier. He's playing Dive Ball. He goes ahead and gets a second Frogadier. He's just going to evolve that benched one. So now he doesn't necessarily get burned by the the stadium. If he's able to, if he's able to duplicate two more times, then he does get all of his all of his dudes into play. So let's go here. I did get a DCE now, but the DCE doesn't matter because I don't want to attack with this active Yveltal. So let's see. I'm a little, a little apprehensive about this. Uh, let's just, let's just go ahead and do it. I guess he's just going to be my meat wall. I really want to get this Yveltal EX out, but what are the odds of me ending into a Garbodor and two Floatstone? Like that's not going to happen. I could Sycamore and just say like, YOLO, I'm going for it. Um, but, you know, that's not super how I play. He does only have a, a hand of four, so I'm not trying to, like, really get him set up here. And, you know, I'm kind of fine with him just, like, chimping away some damage. But I would like to take a big knockout. Um, let's see. So if I if I max Elixir, then I, could, I do have the option to retreat. So I think I am, as much as I don't want to go for it, I'm just going to go for it. And we got it. Okay. Good. Because now we have more options, so... Um, now our option is, do we retreat and then just knock out with this Yveltal EX? I mean, that's just a huge waste of energy, but he doesn't have, he doesn't have a, a balloon on. So like, that's kind of, this is kind of the time we could do it and we could just retreat just using a DCE, just burn one DCE just to do that. And then we could go for the end and I'm okay with that. So two, four, six, eight. Yeah. I think that's the play. Uh, so let's end. And we're going to end here just because we want to save that darkness energy because they're so precious and we only have so many and I've already been a little wasteful. So, okay. So, interesting. I can actually shame in here. You know, uh, it's not a horrible play. If he counters my stadium, then I can counter my stadium back and get, uh, and, and get you know, get rid of that shaman. So I might trainer's mail here and just see what I get. Maybe I get an ultra ball. 
Okay, I got some float stones. It's fine, I do need a float stone. So we're gonna go ahead and, and grab that float stone. We can't use the float stone on our Yvetl. We gotta retreat him manually. We're gonna pay that. And then I think we're just gonna put our float stone down on the Trubbish. And then next turn, pretty much no reason to shame in here. I don't need to shame in here. I was just thinking about it, like in case I really wanna dig for something, but I don't need to. We're just gonna evil ball. So, uh, our board position is not super stellar, as you can see. I would prefer this Yvetl to have more going on, but I was able to at least avoid a situation where uh, a situation where I didn't kill that Froki. I was at least able to avoid a situation where I had to hit into a bursting balloon or something. So, you know, that's that's fine. I mean, it, it definitely could be worse, but this is not like the setup that you want to see in this situation. I'd like to be a little more solid. would like to have not started Fright Night Yvetl, but this is uh, kind of what you live with. You know, you kind of just cross your fingers and hope something buffs out here. Jimmy's going to go ahead and get Greninja online. Next turn, I pretty much got a Sycamore and just like we need, it's game time. Like we need to get that Garbodor out. He's getting, oh, uh, he's got Bursting Balloon now. He's getting uh, Greninja out. He's got Bursting Balloon. He's he's going to be getting Greninja Breakout next turn. We don't have a Lysander. We have no Lysanders in sight. You know, he's pretty he's pretty set up. And his last card's a Sycamore. So he is totally setting up just fine. You know, whereas my board position's a little sketchy and this kind of this kind of life that I'm living over here is not exactly the dream. Jimmy is on the other hand living the dream over there. He's got 3 Greninja Break. Uh turn what Turn one, two, three, turn three, right? Or turn four. Okay. He does counter my stadium. Uh, it doesn't super matter. I didn't really want to shame it anyway. Uh, but it does give me an option now to, instead of limiting his bench, I, I want to switch it around and limit his damage output. So this is tough. I don't want to swing into this balloon, especially if I'm not knocking him out so that seems pretty horrible i don't want to retreat because i'm burning two darkness energy and my board position is already pretty booty and i've already burned through two max elixirs so we're just in a tough spot here i can't get the one hit knockout on him two four six eight ten eleven i'm one energy short of being able to pull off a one hit knockout on him so it's just a rough spot we're pretty much going in here and we're just going to sacrifice this Yvetl EX. I mean, that's just not what you want to do in this situation, but there's really no other way out. So, uh, I haven't seen any other supporters. I haven't seen Pokemon Center Lady or Lysander, so there's no other way around this. I could Shaman for a couple? I guess he... No, I can't because he's got Silent Lab out. So, that's uh, that's what we're looking at here. And there's no point in going for the DCE because it's not going to get me a knockout. So I'm just pretty much going to sycamore here. Get rid of all these cards, these cards I don't want to see. And we're going to get... Oh, God. And we missed the Garbodor. This is really bad, guys. Yep, I mean, that's pretty much the story of how things go. So... This this is not good. This is not good. So what we got ourselves into, we missed the Garbodor, missed the Ultra Ball. Now he is going to be able to snipe that Trubbish again. We max Elixir, we do get something. So that's that's decent at least. But he's probably going to be able to max Potion, so on and so forth. And I just can't afford to, to not attack this turn. It's, you know, straights are, it's that dire straight. So let's uh, let's counter his deal here. And let's just hope for the best, guys. Put this float stone down on that Yvetl. Fine. And then let's just Y Cyclone for 100 and just eat that damage just for breakfast. Ouch.
All right, things are looking rough. Ugh, things are looking rough. That's pretty bad. Pretty bad beats, though. I mean, I started that Fright Night Yveltal, you know, very often, and that's and that's just the reason why I wasn't able to uh, get things going. You know, maybe I should have, in hindsight, maybe I should have kept that Fright Night Yveltal active and just... But that just seems horrible, allowing him to have four... Four Frogadier out there, you know, with the option of getting four Greninja Breaks that I think I have to be, like, slightly more aggressive than that. Oh, God, and he's going to knock out my Trubbish this turn? This is ugly. This is super ugly, guys. And he put the Bursting Balloon on his benched one, anticipating that I might go for that play uh, of, of just, like, Lysandering that benched one up. Oh, God. This is just totally brutal. And I did commit my Flowstone to that Yvotal. I mean, I was already on the back foot in this matchup, so I was kind of just trying to thin my hand down and make sure that if he ends me that I at least, like, draw some good cards. But I wasn't anticipating the Lysander right then and right there. That's that's a bummer. Let's see. So we're going to have to... He knows he's not going to get Garbodor next. He knows I can't get Garbodor next turn. Um, so he can go ahead and snipe this for 60. If he snipes that for 60, he doesn't knock it out. So let's uh, let's just promote that. He's going to snipe a bench, and then he's going to knock that out. Or he could snipe the bench. Or he could, you know, do 80. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Let's see. Going to have to get another Trubbish. Uh, but I only have one Floatstone left. That's a bummer. It's fine. It's a tough situation. Let's, uh... Yeah. Let's just, let's just go in. I could Lysander, but that just seems... Ugh, I need to attach this turn. I can't afford to not attach. He's going to run over me if I do. So, our other Travis is prized. RIP. But we do have a Flowstone, so... I need to start taking prizes. Let's see. Let's get our... Uh, Yvotal EX. Put him down. He's only taken... It's funny, right? How he's only taken one prize, and yet... It's already, like, we've each only taken one prize, and you just know where this game is headed. Like, this is going nowhere good. This is totally bad. All right. So, we need to get another Yvotal up and going. I just ditched my Lysanders to get this, to get more attachments. So I only have one Verse Seeker left in deck. That means I only got one Lysander play left. That is bad. That's really bad. Jimmy, on the other hand, has a deck full of resources. That's fine. So we're either going to Cyclone here or we're going to Evil Ball. Pretty much no point in Evil Ball in 2, 4, 6, 7. Yep, we might as well Cyclone. So let's attach that there. It's going to do more damage. And then we only got one Max Elixir left in deck. Yikes. I mean, we could see if we can hit it. Let's see. There we go. There's one. So. It doesn't really matter, though. We need to take prizes. We need to get a big a big dude out. Let's see. There's that. But then he's just going to be able to target this guy down. It's almost no point. It's just bad. All right, we're gonna move that damage or move that back. You know, potentially, you know, maybe should not have gotten this Yvotal EX in the active, but, or not in the active, but put this Yvotal EX into play, but here he is, he's here, he's ready to party. There's a, uh, you know, I just wanted another option is like somewhere to go, you know, but uh, it is what it is. So this pretty, pretty bummy game he was able to get that Lysander early on that Trubbish just coming in really clutch I missed the Garbodor right when I needed it 
Uh, I was already having a sketchy setup with that Friday night. You battled in the active, had to take some, you know, had to make some compromising plays, just some things that were not good. So this is kind of just the direction this game is taking. If he's able to hit a couple max potions here, we could just go ahead and pack things up because it's going to be super bad. You can see how this matchup and the max potion has definitely made this matchup worse for Yvettel, but uh, it's still not, it's not totally unwinnable. I mean, there was that game, uh, that game, I could have won game two here if I just had one more energy left in deck, uh, which is crazy. All I needed was one more energy and I had that game on lock, in which case I would have had the entire series. Uh, and, and, you know, that's just how the game goes though. Sometimes the game can hinge on one card you know, and one choice here, one choice there. Jimmy's an excellent player. So, you know, it it is what it is. Now, he's got Silent Lab out, which means that I do actually have free retreat. So that that's fine. Yeah. I think, right? I didn't check that up, but <laughs> let's go ahead and see. I only have one Lysander left in deck. That's bad. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12... 14. Okay. Yeah, we got to try and get it. And we don't. It's fine. We got a float stone though. Cool. We can't afford to sycamore here. So, just going to go diving in. Jimmy's got this one. Ain't nothing I can do. And, I mean, what? I could... We're going to attach here. And we're going to Y Cyclone. And we're just going to start stacking up on our bench dude here. Because this is just pretty much all we got. Couldn't take a one-hit knockout. So we got to move. Move shop, guys. Here come the max potions. Yep. Seems bad. Jimmy's still got cards in deck. He can afford to Sycamore. Hits another Max Potion here. It's going to be really bad. Just that whole game. The whole game pretty much hinged on the fact that he was able to get that last in the turn. I mean, just starting starting that Fright Night Evil. I mean, I could really see why people are cutting down to two copies of that. Also, uh, I'm seeing firsthand here just the difference between playing Olympia and playing Pokemon Center Lady. Like if I had played, if I had played uh, Olympia in my list instead of Pokemon Center Lady, which is what I played at Fort Wayne, and I and I did use Olympia a few times at Fort Wayne effectively, but that game too, uh, you know, he was able to just deck me out because I didn't have a switch out. So, uh, you know, if I'd been a little more careful, you know, I, I could have avoided that. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It just, it was a tough, tough situation. Either way. He still got... Alright, Jimmy's got this one, man. I'm gonna let him know. GG's. Yeah, that deck out, that deck out got me. Got to be heads up first, Jimmy. Very good player. So uh, I hadn't, uh, I didn't know that I had prized two of my last energy there on game two. So there we go. Game three, Jimmy's able to wrap it up, take it with Greninja. So good games by Jimmy Pendarvis with that Greninja deck. Uh, he was able to beat both Yveltal and uh, Yveltal Garbodor and Speed Dark with those. Um, but uh, had some good games, went both ways. Uh, was able to win a couple with, uh, with the Speed deck, 1-1. Uh, just by running them off the board. And then uh, very close game two uh, in this series here. But unfortunately, things didn't wrap up the way I wanted. That uh, that Friday Night Yvettel just really wanted to stick out there in the active uh, to start things off. Really making some very compromising turn ones for me. Uh, but 
uh, had some fun, uh, had some great games, and actually learned a lot from those. So that's my hope is that you guys were able to learn a lot from those games as well. Jimmy, uh, ARG pro Pokemon player as well. So definitely some well thought out matches and had a great time playing with Jimmy there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for the night and log off. So thank you guys all for joining us. I appreciate that. I uh, just want to shout, uh, shout out ARG and the Circuit Series coming up here. Uh, the You could go to ARGCircuitSeries.com to see where those events are being located. There's one coming up at the end of the month uh, that, that offers $1,000 for the winner of the Sunday tournament. And, uh, and a few happening in February as well. And on the weekend of February 34th, state championships are happening in card shops everywhere. So appreciate you guys coming by to check us out. Uh, we'll be doing this more often and doing uh, a lot more programming uh, here to come. And just really excited to be on team, be on board here, uh, doing, doing some exciting stuff here uh, with ARG. So thanks again. Be seeing you guys around shortly. And uh, I'll be back next week for more games on uh, ARG's Pokemon channel. So peace out, guys.